This is Tristan with Victorious Games. Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to do something that I've never done before. Normally when I make videos, I prepare the in advance and then remake them during the video. Today I'm going to try to build something from scratch so you can see a little bit of what my process is and just how easy it is to make things with GDevelop. So today the project is to recreate this animated logo that Supabase has on their website. Supabase is an open source alternative to Firebase, and they do really neat things. This week is their eighth launch week, which is why they made this logo, this eight. I got this idea to make this animation from Graham the Dev on Twitter. They copied this example using vanilla JavaScript. So I thought this would be a fun project to do with GDevelop, which is an open source game engine. All right, so first thing, let's look at this a little closer. I'm zoomed in pretty close right now. So we got this like dark purple background and there's like two rings, the, the big, bigger ring and the smaller ring up top. This is as much as I can zoom in actually. What I am seeing is that there are some objects moving counterclockwise and some moving clockwise. And I see what I think are two different types of objects although it could possibly be the same object with different sizes. These larger ones look like kind of a yellow color. I can't even tell if they're circles or squares, but I'm guessing they're circles. It's a very low resolution object. They're only a few pixels each. And so I was trying, I looked at them and it looks like they're going in orbit around like a center point here and then a center point here. And but they're going different speeds and they don't always seem to be using the same center point. So I don't know exactly the full way they've implemented, implemented this, but it's given me enough information to recreate it. All right, let's see if we can make something that looks similar to this. All right, so this is a new project in GDevelop. I'm gonna start with a, trying to get a purple background. It's a deep purple. And eh, probably dark, darker than that. Maybe even darker. Hard for me to tell in this small window just how dark it is. Let's, let's try that. Actually, we could like oh, oh, they have more of a red purple, I think. So let's make it more red. Don't think I can. There's no like dropper where I can copy the. Uh, I think I'll just pull it more red. Okay. How about that? Uh, still more. More red. This towards the red. There we go. Now it's looking. Okay, that's in the same ballpark. Let's create these flying objects. I can't decide if I want to do two or one. Let's just start with one. And we'll see if different sizes makes them look like this. So we're going to create. Let's create. Let's maximize this. Sprite. Actually, let's do the center objects first, because I know I want a center object. And it has to have some sort of animation, although it's going to be, I'm going to hide these. Let's just make them green, just, just so we know that they're going to be over. And I forgot to apply the color. Do you ever do that? You pick your color, but then you forget to actually use it. I do that a lot. There we go. Save. Right. So we need a top object and a bottom object. This is what's going to be the center of the rotation. So that's a good start. Let's make those yellowish objects that are going to fly around. Call these yellow flyers. And they are pretty small, but they're. I'm going to just try to do a circular sh circle shape. I'm going to resize this from 64 to maybe 16 pixels. It might be 8 pixels. I don't know. Let's try 16. We could always go smaller. We'll do the circle tool. Oh, let's pick that color. It was like a yellowish. It was like a... This kind of yellow, maybe? Let's see what that looks... Oh, wait. I need to do my circle. Yeah, this looks like it could be the right color. And then that. Save. Apply. That's too big. Ah, what's my resolution though? Okay. Let's change the resolution. Let's make sure 
Well, let's just keep this resolution. I think right now the resolution is 1280 by 720. That should be good enough, but let's let's shrink these in half. These so click resize. I will choose eight by eight. Oh man. Almost worth just starting over. Because oh, I have to pick the color again. I'll never I'll never get the exact same color. Circle tool. Alright. And then fill. Save. Okay, there we go. Now it looks like a, you know, yellow on purple. So they'll look about like this when it's happening. They might be too big still. Let's just try it and then we can always adjust the size later. So we need to make this object go in a circle around it. I'll show you the code for that first before we get, I mean, I could just jump into the procedural generation, but maybe if we make it more incremental, it'll be more easy for people to follow. In fact, let's just get rid of one of these. Let's make, let's see if we can make this guy go in a circle. All right. To do that, we're going to create, we're going to apply an instant force, a force angle. And the angle is going to be the angle from the yellow flyer to the center object. Let's see. Angle, angle to object. There we go. So this will return the angle from the little yellow guy to the center. And that would, let me just show you what's going to happen. If I do this, let's do 50 pixels per second. What's going to happen? Should fly directly into it. Yep. So this is obviously what it's supposed to be doing. And then it stops right there. But what happens if we add 90 degrees to this? So instead of flying directly at the object, it flies off to the side. And because it's always moving, that angle is constantly changing, it's going to constantly orbit. If you want to go the opposite direction, you would do like minus 90 like this. And now it's going clockwise. So that's how we're going to make our guys go around. But we need a lot of them, right? So do you want me to? I mean, one way it would be to place a lot of these manually and they will just kind of go around. That would be one way to do it. But it's really easy to make these procedurally in GDevelop. So we'll just delete these. What we'll say is let's do a beginning of the scene event. In fact, I'm going to keep this there. Move. All right. For our setup, we'll say at the beginning of the scene, now we need to create things. We need to create a lot of things. So we could do a, like a while event. I'm going to do a repeat because I want to, I want to make a lot of objects. Let's just say I want to make a hundred objects. If I say you'll objects create and I choose the center object. We'll choose its bounding box center. Oops. And we will, this will create the objects right in the center. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do plus, let's, let's create, let's create it somewhere inside this box. Let's, let's pick a random number in the range of 100 to 200 pixels of this box. In fact, we could do that for both of these. So starting from the center, plus 100 or 200 pixels. And that should do it. This should create them. Okay. What did I do wrong? Oh, I did plus 100 to 200. Let's do negative 200 because we want them to be able to go above or below. There we go. So what we did is we created things in basically a square around the center object. And then the same move command that we had before is still happening. But they're all going to be moving the same speed in the same direction. And they're too close also. We don't want them to be close. I need to think for a minute how I'm going to make sure that they are not... Oh, I have an idea. Okay, we're going to use like 
we're just going to create these and the posi the position doesn't really matter because we're going to instantly assign them I'll show you we're going to use a thing called put around an put the object around another object so with a specified angle and distance this will be good so what are we doing here this is object that's going to be moving this is the center object okay so we want these things to be let's say 300 oh yeah this has to be a random random in range 300 to 400 pixels away that might even be too much but let's try it angle oh random in range basically 0 to 360 so it's a full circle so each object that's created is going to be between 3 and 400 pixels away from the center object at a at a random angle so this should do what i want this this original location like doesn't really matter it's going to instantly be moved oh yeah <clears throat> we're really close this looks so good what do we need to do let's just to make it more obvious what's happening i'm just going to put those at zero so it's obvious that see they're getting they're getting created right here but this put around is placing them in this position this is looking really close to the thing we want but i need i think they're too far out so let's do let's do 200 to 250 let's try that okay very very good we've got something pretty close but we do need to make some of these go the opposite direction and also different speeds so what i'm going to do is set some variables on these guys with using randomness so we're going to do a variable number we'll just call this move movement speed and we'll set it to random and range obviously we're using this command this expression a lot five or 50 to 150 and that'll be like pixels per second right now they're moving at 50 so this is probably gonna be too fast let's go 25 to 75 that'll be half is half the half of this current speed and then a little bit faster so that might even be too fast but we can adjust that later so we're setting the movement speed let's set the direction so if we do a boolean variable we'll just say clockwise we'll say clockwise hmm. no let's not do bo booleans i mean booleans would work but there's the pretty fun trick that i learned you can set a number variable we'll call it direction multi multiplier fire multiplier and we're going to set it to watch this this is the random width step so minimum maximum and step so i love this this is like a cool hack so you go negative one to one with a step of two so basically this is going to pick negative one or one like there's like a 50 50 chance it'll be negative one or a positive one so this is a really cool thing was so basically the direction multipliers these are going to be one negative one we're going to times that basically this instant force uh, 50 pixels let's just set that to yellow flyers variable movement speed and then times yellow flyers variable uh, i'll have to spell multiplier again great direction liar i want to say like multiplayer all right so we're very similar to before except for our movement speed is going to be random and half the half of them will be moving the opposite direction because the similar to this change this angle to min, minus 90 and plus 90 doing a negative speed that accomplishes the exact same goal oh look at that yes we are really good Ooh, so i want to set i think they're still moving too fast let's let's change our speed from i don't know 10 to 30. There we go. It looks a little more like the the real thing. Let's make their opacity. Let's change their size and their opacity. So we could do opacity, sprite opacity, and we'll use random and range. And 
this is a zero to 255. So we want them to be partially visible. Let's try like 100 to 200. So we're kind of like hard to see and then mostly visible. Let's try that. Nah, I don't know if that's good. I don't know if I like that. Let's not do that. I don't like that. Instead of changing opacity, let's change the scale. The scale will shrink or increase its size. And so a scale of one is no change. So we're going to do 0.9. Actually, let's do like 0.8 to one. So like they could be smaller. Oh, wow. That's not quite what I want. Let's do 0.9. Actually, let's try this. 0.8 to 0.9. What? Why are some so big? That doesn't make sense. Hmm. Does that make sense to you? What's happening? It's almost like some of them. Did I? There's some pre created. There's no pre created ones. Hmm. Oh, I, I guess it's just because I think I didn't know why. Because it's a, such a small number, the pixels is only eight. Changing the scale <laughs> is like a big jump. So let's just change it to, let's change its size. Size. So right now they're eight by eights. So let's do a random. Oh no, this isn't going to work because they might be like oblong shaped and stuff. Like if, if I just say like six to eight, they're going to some, I mean, there could be some square ones. There could be some weird shaped ones. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. It doesn't look bad. I need to make them smaller though. Let's try five to seven. Five to seven. Okay. I don't know. It'll probably be good enough. So what do we need next? We obviously need a second one of these. A couple ways we could do it. We could create like a top center object. Like I could, I could duplicate this object and say top and bottom. That would be a simple solution and a little bit less code. But since I want to train you on some advanced techniques, let's just use the the same object, the center object, and to create another one. This will be on the bottom. And so if I preview this, see how it's just picking the top one still? What we need to do is create a for each object. So for each object, and we will choose for each center object. So now it's going to perform all of these for each of the center objects. However, see how it started off great, and now it's just getting like ridiculously not great. The reason for that is the they were created correctly, but this this bottom move objects, it's just picking the first one. And so everybody's going around this top one here. So what we need to do is we need a way to link when, when one of these small objects is created, we need to link it to the one it was, it was created with. I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but here's how you do it. <laughs> We're going to say link two objects. And this is just like a logical linking. It's not like you're not physically or there's no visual element to this link. You're logically linking them. We're going to link this with this. So now because this was created underneath one of the center objects, they're now able to be, this link is now able to be used. So we can say here, the condition is called take into account linked objects. So we'll choose, let's see, pick these objects if they're linked to this object. So let's try that. And whoops, let's see what we need. So uh, the top ones are moving and the bottoms are not moving. The reason for that is we need to do a for each object down here as well. Pretty much any time you're going to use the take into account, you need to use for each object. Okay, now we have our two circles moving and everything looks pretty good. I think I need to zoom out. Let's just let's just stick that up here and we'll just camera zoom. One is the normal zoom, so if we go like 0 0.8, we will be zooming out. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. We need Oh, these bottom guys need to be bigger. Oh, I had an idea. 
if I make, let's just set up this grid and then we'll show the grid. So if we make this bottom one bigger, like this, you know, we can use that size to adjust the orbits. I, oh, I need to, it bothers me that I can't, 16 by 16. There we go. Can't center them. All right. So if we do this, still no change. We obviously need to shrink the radiuses. It doesn't look, quite look like an eight yet. Oh, there we go. So we're pretty close. We're really close. We're really close. Let's um, let's shrink the radius of the top one, and that should be good enough. Or yeah, that's probably what we should do. So you know how where we're putting them here, it's the distance is basically this 200 to 50, 200 to 250. What if we base it off of the size of this object? So this object is 64 by 64 pixels wide. This one is 120 pixels wide. It's like twice as big. So I'm going to just change this to the range will be, this is probably not a great idea, but I'm going to try it. Let's see, center object width. Oh yeah. So we'll just use the width. So that's 64. So it was 200. So let's just go three times it by three. Let's try that. Width by three. Oh, that's the bottom. Okay. Well, let's do so between two and three times the width. That's what we're doing. Oh gosh. This is probably not going to be a great idea. Well, all right, we're, we're just dealing with the width. So shrink, shrink that width and then grow this width. Okay. Oh, the number. 100 times. Oh, I had an idea. Let's pull this up here. Let's make our repeat based off the width as well. Or I could even use the height. But let's just start with the width. So instead of 100 times, let's do center object width. And then that's, so that's like, let's do two times that. So for each center object, repeat two times the width. Mm, that's not bad, not bad. Let's actually do the height. This is such a weird way to do this. I don't, I hope you learned something from this, but like I'm kind of doing something I've never done before and it may be too confusing and not a great idea. What do we need to do here? Well, let's just, what happens if we scoot this up and this down? Oh, and then we can zoom out a little bit more. Oh yeah, so I need more height. Height gives you more particles. Yeah. Let's 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 do less height here. Okay. A little more height. Because height gives you more particles. Width gives you distance from oh wow, we're really close. We just need to zoom out. So we're gonna zoom out to 0.75. We need more on the bottom, I think. Oh, you know what the problem is, is um this range of two to three is too wide of a band. Let's make it two to 2.5. Oh, we are really close. What do we need to do to make it perfect? Slower movement. So the movement, where's the movement speed? No, oh, down here. Oh yeah, cause that's just like, the movement is set here, movements 10 to 30. So we're gonna do five to 20. No, five to 15. Try that. It doesn't quite look right, but it doesn't look quite bad. I'm gonna scoot this down a little bit. Wow, what do we need to do? Make it look better. Okay, so I'll just do this since it's, I said I was gonna hide these, so let's just hide them right now. So we're hiding them. All right, let's compare this to the actual super base. Let's see if I can, Wow, why is it not, it doesn't even look purple at all now. Oh, it's just very dark. All right, what can I do to make this look more accurate? I guess my problem is I've got a 
even distribution. Oh, I have an idea. I need to think about it. So notice how there's like more like outliers, kind of like stragglers. It looks more natural. This looks more like ants or people walking in along a street or a path. I could use like an offset. So right now they're all orbiting the center, the, specific, the exact center of these objects. What if I assign them a random offset? Let's try that. Let's see if we can make that happen. Also, are they, how, do we, how do we like the size? They're a little big, but that's okay. I also want to make this purple a little darker. Purple, darker. There we go. Okay, so the random offset idea. So let's create a variable and we'll call this x. I'll call offset x and offset y. And the offset will be a random number. But the thing we need, yeah, this will work still. So, uh, yes, I think, I think it'll work. So we're gonna set an offset, set this offset. So the offset will be random in range. Let's just set it to be minus thirty-two to thirty-two. Yeah, this is this this could work. This could work. So what what's this gonna do? Is it's gonna pick a number between negative thirty-two and thirty-two for the x offset and for the y offset. Then down here, when we're doing angle to object, we're going to change that angle to position. And this position is going to reference the center object. And the we're going to start with the, the center, the X position, plus the yellow flyers offset, which is called offset X. Okay, that gave us the, the, so we're trying to describe a position right here, this position. So it's the center of the, it's the X center of the object. Now, let me just copy this because we're gonna do the same for Y. So this will be offset Y and then the Y and, oh good, we got it right. All right, so it's our, here's our 90 degree offset. And let's just try if this works. I, th I think it's going to work great. It's not working. Let's make it bigger, this offset. Let's make it like, make sure, let's, just to make sure we know what's happening, let's do 128, 128. This should be huge. Why? Well, it's, not, it's, not it's not even applying for some reason. Oh, you know what's happening probably? Yellow? Offset X yellow flyers, random in range. Oh, this is angle to position. It's from the flyer to the center object plus the offset. Did I spell that right? Offset X, cap, did I capitalize it right? Variable. I'm not sure what's happening. Okay, so I let this run a little bit longer and I realized that it is applying the offset. It's just not applying it at the initial state of their positions. We can apply that movement by moving their positions. So let's see, let's do an action. We will position and we will, instead of saying set to, we will add their offsets. So change the position of that. We'll just use the same thing, yellow flares variable and the off, oops offset x and then we'll do that for the y let's see if this works so after we create them we create them we put them around the object these random places but then we're going to move them by this offset and let's see if that works oops i think my offsets will be huge what did i do oh 128 yeah let's just go back to the 32 32 let's see what that looks like that might be too much Oh, actually, no. Oh my gosh, it looks good. It looks good. I like it. I like it. How close are we to our final? See, we've got outliers. That's what I was hoping to do is get some less uniform distribution of objects. Do we need more objects? Oh, I think I was going to make them smaller. Let's see. 
if I make them a little bit smaller, so change the size. So instead of five to seven, let's make it four to six. Let's just do four to five. So these are going to be small. We may need to create more of them. Oh yeah, that looks really close to the thing. Let's do more of them though. So to do more, we can, we're doing two times their height. So let's increase their height. Increase their height. This will create a lot more. Oh yeah, it's looking really good. Well, I don't know what else we can do to make this look better. It's pretty darn close. I'd actually love to hear the person that made it with three for super base, how close this is. Let's pull up the super base version. I would say it's pretty close. Wow. Yeah, I'd love to know how they did it and how close it was to my method. Let's just leave it at that. Let's call that good. I'm going to publish this game and this. I'll probably put the source somewhere available. I haven't decided yet where, but I hope you enjoyed this video. It was fun to make. And let me know if you like this style of video and I will make more of them. It's actually maybe easier. Just I might be able to make more videos if I just do them ad hoc without much planning. And if they're valuable, then that's what we that works for everybody. Okay. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.